Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. everybody God bless you God bless you God bless you it's my joy to be here and um, the psalmist said I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord there is wisdom in the house of the Lord it says when I came into the house of the Lord then understood I my honor to hear the word of God again but I like you to please appreciate Pastor Godwin and his dear wife Pastor Sean God bless you really honor you sir and honor you ma thank you so so very much and then i came in while the man of god pastor jeff was ministering profound wisdom let's honor him god bless you god bless you profound profound wisdom father we ask that you speak to us the bible declares that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple our hearts are open, our minds are ready to receive of your word. For the Bible declares that they go from strength to strength, as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. We pray that you speak to our hearts, enlarge us, and cause us indeed to arise all through this conference. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. to advance except and unless we grow in fact one of the ways that God answers prayer is by helping the person praying to grow there are many ways that God answers prayers number one is by supernatural intervention like healing deliverance number two God answers prayers by introducing to your life the ministry of men Number three, God answers prayers by causing you to grow because there are many things that were not designed to be prayer requests. The fact that you write them as requests, they are statements to you that you need to grow. Hallelujah. You need to grow into the version that can work in that reality. For the Bible says an heir, for as long as that heir is a child, he differeth not from a slave even though he be Lord of all. So I believe that conferences like this create an opportunity for growth. And then when we are built up, we can be possessors of our inheritance. He says, I commend you to God, Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. And to the word of his grace, the Bible says, number one, it is able to build you up. And then when you are built up, it delivers unto you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Are we ready tonight? I'll be doing a two-part teaching for this conference. We'll start number one tonight, and then we'll finish as God grants us grace tomorrow. Nehemiah chapter 2, I'm teaching on arise and build. Nehemiah chapter 2, I'll take 18 to 20, and then we'll just discuss a few things. Nehemiah chapter 2, will I have it projected? Nehemiah chapter 2 from verse 18. Okay, I see. I can turn and then read from here. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, and also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us arise or rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Verse 19. But when Sambalat, the Hornite, and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem, the Arabian, heard it. They laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, What is this thing that ye do? 
will ye rebel against the king? Verse 20. Then answered I them and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. May that be your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. The first thing I want us to know tonight as a foundation is that everyone born of God has a destiny of glory and greatness. Very simple but very profound. That everyone born of God has a destiny of glory and a destiny of greatness. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, the apostle was charging us and he said, We are a royal priesthood. He called us a holy nation, a peculiar people. He said that we have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light to show forth the praises of he that called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So it's important for us to know that there are implications to being born of God. The believer is not an ordinary person. It's an orientation you must sustain. The believer is not just another kind of man. Something happens to you when you come into Christ. The Bible says, as many as believed him, even to them that believe upon his name, he gave them power to become. There is something you become when you are saved that you cannot become outside of Christ. Hallelujah. It is a very necessary foundation we must understand that something happens to the believer at the point you encounter Jesus as Savior, Lord, and Christ. Now, theologically speaking, when you confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ and believe in his substitutionary sacrifice, there are three gifts that are given to you at the point of salvation. Number one is the forgiveness of sin. It's important you understand this. Number two, the gift of righteousness, the Bible says. And then number three, the life of God. These are the blessings that follow confessing the Lordship of Jesus. Number one, forgiveness of sin. Number two, the gift of righteousness. And then number three, the life of God, what you call Zoe. Now, it is a life indestructible. That, that word eternal life or everlasting life that the Bible says in John chapter 10 and verse 10 is a very unique expression of God's life. It's not the God kind of life. It is God's very life. Every life on earth is God's life. He owns all things. Animal life, plant life, it comes from him. Are we together now? But there is an impartation that he did upon man. He gave his very life, not just the kind of it. Hallelujah now. Yes, plants have a kind of God's life. Animals have a, God, a kind of God's life, but they cannot be said to be in oneness with him. There is a unique expression of God's life. Please listen carefully so that you understand the basis for your walking and living a victorious life. That the moment you get born again, when you are saved, you may not feel it. It may not appear as so, but according to the authority of scripture, you have been born into a life of victory. You have been born into an, an indestructible life. In fact, here's how the Bible puts it. The Bible says, whatsoever is born of God, are we still here? Overcometh the world. That should be 1 John 5, 4. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So when we are born again, we are born overcomers. Whether or not we walk in the reality of that prophetic word is another discussion. But in the mind of God, every believer is born into a life of victory. If that is you, shout amen. amen. Most believers do not understand the implication of being born again. And unfortunately, even among us men of God, we have cheapened the experience of being saved and reduced it to a one-minute prayer and then a follow-up team so that those who are saved do not even really believe that something supernatural happened to them. I tell you that many people are failures by their understanding of what really happened to them already. Not just that they missed out in life and destiny because they have cheapened the miracle of salvation. Are we together? 
the Bible says, Now are we the sons of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. Then he says, Now, not tomorrow, are we the sons of God. The prodigal son, until he had an opportunity to contrast his life before and after, that was when he understood the superiority, the kind of life that he had. The story of the prodigal son gives us an opportunity to view an individual's life from two dimensions. By default, he was born into a family of royalty. He cheapened it and through carelessness, he didn't realize there was another kind of life outside of that covering. And his rebellion gave him an opportunity to deplete and decline until he saw that there was another kind of life and he rose up he said now that i see the contrast i will arise and go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and you know against heaven i'm not worthy to be called your child take me as one of these servants i so desperately need this life now that i understand the quality are we together and the father said no 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 you are restored back to royalty the signet ring was put back again. He came back home with a greater appreciation of something he always had. There was nothing given to him that was new. It was always his. Rebellion brought him out of that experience. Are we together now? So I'm saying to you that when you are born again, as simple and as cheap as that confession of faith is, a miracle really happens to your spirit. You have been upgraded to a kind of person. The Bible calls you a partaker of his divine nature. Say, I am. Shout it. Say, I am a partaker of God's nature. It is very powerful. Many things happen to us when we are saved. Number one, the Bible tells us that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's dear son. It is a spiritual reality and so your senses may not immediately relate with it until you are transformed. But it is a fact. Number two, the Bible says we have been raised up together and we have been made to sit. It's a positional advantage. Are we learning now? You may still be on earth. You may still be surrounded by the same challenges. But there has been a translocation in the spirit. And you must believe this. It is the foundational orientation you must have for a victorious life. Then number three, you must know that you have become one with Christ. You can fail alone, but you and God cannot fail. This is something you need to believe. I can fail alone by reason of my background, reason of ignorance. But once I come into that divine partnership, the presence of God forbids certain things from happening in my life forever. So when you say you are born again, you don't just mean you are one who has decided to just get into this ritual of faith called Christianity. You are saying that you have opened up yourself as an act of your will to step into a life invincible, a life indestructible, the life of an overcomer. Now the way it works in the kingdom is that you don't just see before you believe. You believe that spiritual reality, the root of all things is from the spirit. So while that is a reality from the spirit, your mind will not relate with it because your mind is unfruitful to spiritual things at the point of salvation. But you have to believe. The Bible says, whose report will you believe? Are we learning now? So the first thing I need to establish and drum into your heart is that the believer is not an ordinary person. And this is not just Pentecostal gibberish. If you don't believe this, even if Satan is not there, you will still fail. Satan is not the only reason why we fail. Your mindset is your contribution to your failure or your success. The orientation that you have is your own contribution to your failure or your success. Who is learning now? So the first thing that I want you to know tonight is that we have been born into a destiny of glory and greatness. Oh, I believe this. I believe this. Glory and greatness. Glory and greatness. Glory and greatness. Regardless my background, glory and greatness. Can someone prophesy that? Glory and greatness. You are, you are defining yourself by the word of God. 
have been born into a life of glory and greatness. It doesn't matter the background. It doesn't matter who believes it. It doesn't matter the naysayers coming in the spirit of Sambalat and Tobias. Let God be true and all men, including your thinking at, at present, let it be a liar. Born into a life of royalty and grace. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10, the Bible says, We have been made unto our God kings and priests. We have been made unto our God kings and priests. When there was famine in Samaria, there were two people who were exempted from it. Number one was the king. Number two was the prophet who was in the office of priesthood. Now the Bible says you are both king and priest. Your call and your ordination has already put you in a position, a vantage position. Are we together? Now, whether it works in your life or not is why we are here. But settle this for a fact. Don't get too used to pain and defeat that you allow it rob you of what is true in the spirit. Are we together? Yeah. So everyone who is born of God has a destiny of glory and greatness the destiny of an overcomer number two very quickly the second thing i want you to know tonight as we build this discussion is that the quality of your life in as much as the life in christ brings you a plethora of blessings these blessings according to ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 the bible says that they are in heavenly places and are in christ they are real but they are in a dimension that is not yet physical, not visible. Are we together? Invisible does not mean unreal. It just means beyond the scope of your sight. Are we learning now? The quality of your life and the extent of your impact, please lend me your attention. The quality of your life and the extent of your impact depends on God and you. The quality of your life and the extent of your impact depends on God and you. And I can tell you based on the authority of scripture, as far as God's commitment to your destiny is concerned, it is finished. It is not about to be finished. As far as God's commitment to your becoming great, to your walking in glory, are we together now? The Bible says, he that did not spare his son, he already gave him every, he gave him up for us. How much more? God has already made everything that pertains unto life and godliness ours in Christ. You believe that? Say amen. amen. So your, the quality of your life and the extent of your impact depends on God and you. Please look up. This is a very powerful you must have. If you believe that your life, whatever it becomes, depends entirely on God, it sounds very comforting and spiritual, but you are wrong. And if you believe that it depends ultimately on you, you are still wrong. Are we together? Because the Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Are we still here? Except the Lord watches over the city, the watchman watched, but in vain. He says it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow, but he giveth his beloved sleep. So when it has to do with the equation of your greatness, God has a part to play and you have a part to play. Fortunately for you, God's part has been finished in Christ. When he said it is finished, he meant it. It's a spiritual reality, finished in Christ. Are we together? That means it's, it's safe for you to assume that a major part of your victory equation, your success equation, your greatness equation on earth, here and now, depends on you. Because the role that God has to play, he has played in Christ. The best that God can give you has been given already, Christ. Are we together now? Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19. These are scriptures that challenge us to see that our destinies in partnership with God are largely a function of the responsibility we take over them. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Say life and death. Blessing and cursing. Say blessing and cursing. I cannot force you 
but I can advise you, choose life. And the implication is that it extends beyond you. Whatever you choose will affect someone outside of you. It says, choose life that you and your seed may live. Joshua chapter 1, when we read from verse 8, you know, the Lord was admonishing young Joshua. He was about to take over leadership. He says, Moses, my servant is dead. And he began to charge him to say, be strong. Do you know that it was God speaking to him? And yet he was asking the man to be strong and of good courage. Then we get to verse 8 and he says, this book of the law, I like this, shall not depart from out of thy mouth. He says, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do, observe to do, observe to do all that is written therein. He says, then shall thou, shall thou, shall thou make thy way prosperous and thou shall have good success. Who is speaking to Joshua? God. And yet he's leaving the responsibility of his greatness, the manifestation of it. He's saying it is entirely up to you. Whatever becomes of your leadership is not a reflection of my incompetence. From today I'm speaking to you that the responsibility of your being a great leader, a great person, a great servant of God largely depends on you. Now as simple as this sounds, there are all kinds of wise sayings that have helped to peg us at levels of defeat in life. These are wise sayings that were fabricated out of pain. Are we together? To comfort us sociologically. Sayings like one day go better. Sayings like it's not my fault. Sayings like who did I offend? You know, all these kinds of nice sayings. They look very comforting but they are dangerous and destructive. Because life and the spirit does not work that way. Are we together now? That whatever you become from this moment largely depends on your knowing that your the quality of your life and the extent of your impact is your responsibility. The quality of your life. There are so many people blaming God, blaming preachers, blaming parents, blaming obvious situations for their lives. They are blaming every other thing but themselves. Tonight is a charge for you to take responsibility that if anything will change, let me tell you the truth. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but 2024 will look like 2023 and 2025 will look like 2024 and 2020 anything will look like the one you hate until you take responsibility. The man who went to the pool of Bethesda, he didn't plan to stay there for 38 years. I'm sure he went there hoping that the first staring of the water would be his turn one year became two years became five years became 10 years are we together became 20 years i'm sure at the 37th year he said this time around he was there 38 years and if jesus did not come to bail him to challenge him that he had a role to play when jesus asked him the question why are you still in this condition you are sitting beside an advantage this happens yearly an angel comes to steer the water how come your case was so different that it lasted 38 years? He said, I have no man. It's supposed to be a very correct revelation, but in his case, it was a declaration of irresponsibility. I have no man. If I have no man, it is your responsibility to, to use one year to greet somebody, make somebody your friend, somebody who is not crippled. While you are crippled, you establish relationships for one year so that when it is time for that somebody can are we together now so the man thought it was a very wise excuse i tell you 38 years would have been his lifetime except that jesus came to bail him out if ministry is going to work for you you must take responsibility if your finances is going to work for you you must take responsibility the faith life is a call to responsibility, not just a call to awareness of what Christ has done. Are we together? From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain, but that reality did not save you. He had to come take responsibility and act out prophecy. He died not um, in the realm of the spirit. He died physically. It was that physical death that translated to your victory. I submit to you, there are many believers who are irresponsible and especially because of teachings like favor with all due respect, breakthrough, restoration. The awareness of these teachings are not supposed to frustrate 
your desire to take responsibility over your life. So many people just fold their arms and they believe that I, I love God, I'm saved. It's impossible for me to fail. And they keep watching their life fail every day. Challenge yourself and be angry tonight in righteousness that it is my responsibility to arise. The Bible says, arise, shine. Amplify, it says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. What God does is to energize you to arise, but you will have to do the standing yourself. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1, it says, son of man, stand up upon your feet and I will speak unto you. The man did not have the strength to stand up. Verse 2 says, and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, but the standing up was his own responsibility. Someone prophesied, say myself, arise. Say it with conviction. Say myself, arise. Arise from a life of excuses. I'll arise from a life of blaming people. Listen, listen, listen. I, I understand your past. I understand your pain. I'm not being blind to that reality. But we are tired of hearing the excuses of yesterday. Arise. The believer is born victorious, but the quality of your life in every ramification and by every definition and the extent of your impact depends on you and God. You are responsible for designing your reality. Write that down. You are responsible for designing your reality. If you design a life of defeat, a life of failure, you will have to take responsibility. Are we together now? The tools for making an excellent design have been given to you by God in Christ. But you must learn how to engage those tools to design a life that represents the glory of God. I made up my mind that I will never allow happenstance to paint my life like an artist using a canvas to paint nonsense and paint rubbish. I have to be actively involved in the making of my destiny. Are we together now? You must be involved. If my life does not capture within it favor, I take responsibility and engage until it changes. If my life does not capture victory, if my life does not capture speed, if my life does not capture um, whatever it is that makes the reality of the life of God to be manifest, I take responsibility and I engage. For many of you, you are sitting with joy, whereas your life does not have within it favor, does not have within it blessings. The, the, you are not a portrait of one who God has helped. I'm here to challenge you tonight if you think time will change things you're wasting your time you have to make up your mind tonight that things must change say that after me things must apostle i've been in abuja for 10 years i hate to say this but i'm still struggling with my rent i sympathize with you let me give you a solution quick listen to me that's the solution listen to me right now that if you think one day Somebody will just get up and build a house and give you. Favor is programmed. It looks automatic, but it is not. That's why it's not happening to you. It's programmed. Are we together now? When you read the story of favor, it will look like a series of coincidences. But there is a control room in the spirit where you schedule favor and step out and watch it act out itself in your life. I'm praying for someone in the name of Jesus Christ. In any area you have allowed the devil to take responsibility over the framing of your destiny through carelessness. I'm praying tonight that he will take his hands off the formation of your destiny. And that you and the Holy Ghost will sit on the wheel of your destiny. And you begin to deconstruct certain things and begin to reprogram an enviable destiny. You believe that? Shout Amen. So don't say so, so so and so was lucky. I'm sure this person was lucky. No, it is not luck. Are we together now? If you are going to be great, I don't care the kind of dream you've had and you are having. I don't care how, how truthful it is. I don't care how many crusades you see in the realm of the spirit. It will remain there until you know how to engage to make it manifest. Who is learning tonight? So I'm shaking off unbelief. I'm shaking off fear. Listen. 
Time will not change anything. Time only reveals. Time reveals the excellency of your decisions. Time reveals whether you are engaging in righteousness or not. The believer is born of God. But becoming successful or becoming a failure all depend on you. Failure looks like it's automatic. But there are things you have to do to fail. Even failure works by laws. There are laws you must obey to fail. If you disobey those laws, you cannot fail. That is the truth. Failure too depends on obedience. It's not only success. Failure is, it, it depends on obedience. If you find yourself failing, you are really obedient, but you are obedient to the wrong things. Because both failure and success, victory and defeat depend on laws. You don't just fail. It looks like you are just failing. Because every time you don't take responsibility, someone helps you to program something. So you see harvest whose seeds you cannot remember sowing because you left your field without sowing and while men slept. Satan is also a farmer. He can help you. When he sees your land careless with no seeds, he will come and drop certain seeds and you will see a harvest you cannot remember sowing. Are we learning? The quality of your life. Listen, I learned this early in life and I made up my mind that I will never fail in life. And this is not like the man of God shared so very powerfully. This is not just for the fear of failure. If you really love Jesus, then you must seek for your life to manifest victory. Because the Bible says in John 15 and verse 8, it says, Herein is our Father glorified. When you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. You are being a hypocrite if you say, Lord, I love you, and your life cannot capture that glory. Part of the expressions of love is that you find the need of the person you claim to love. Or what gives him joy? Are we together? And you are about doing that which gives him joy. When you want to celebrate, say, the birthday of a loved one, usually you are very intentional. What does she like? What does he like? Are we together? Many believers claim they love God and yet they do not do anything about failure. Failure is a misrepresentation of everything God claims he is in your life. When you fail, it's not just bad for you. It makes God look like a liar. Because you are the only vista on earth from which people will interpret God. And it matters that your life becomes a worthy portrait, a representation of who God is. If the Bible says God is love, it should be captured in your life. If I am watching from a third party's view, and you keep loving this God, serving him, and your life does not capture anything glory, anything grace. I have a right to interpret my definition of God out of your pain and, and, and contrast it with what I read in the Bible, and I cannot conclude that God is love. There are many people today whose lives and whose failures have misrepresented God and driven people away from righteousness. Because it doesn't make sense. How could I love God so much and then nothing is working in my life? And you claim he sent his son to die for me? Are we learning now? John chapter 15 and verse 16 says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. This is powerful. Ephesians 2.10, we are his workmanship, products of his artistry. The Bible says, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 3.10, now to the intent that now unto principalities and powers, are we still Christians, might be made known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God, many sided wisdom of God, many sided wisdom of God. Matthew 5 13, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savour or saltiness, wherewith shall it be salted again? It is good for nothing except to be thrown down and to be trampled under foot of men. Then he says, You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. 
It says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but they keep it on a candlestick and it gives light to everyone in the room. Verse 16 now says, let, I like that word, permit, do not restrain. Let your light so shine, say so shine, so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father. There it is. They may see your good deeds and glorify your father. Let's reverse it. They will glorify your father when they see your good deeds. They will glorify your father when they see your good deeds. That means if they are not glorifying the father, the problem is that you are not manifesting the good deeds that should compel praise. Are we together now? So it's important for us to know that God is glorified when we bear fruit. Jesus saw a tree that had leaves and did not have fruit. And even though it was not the time of figs, he did not spare. He cursed it for taking from the earth and not yielding fruit. John chapter 15 from verse 1, Jesus says, I am the vine and my father is the husbandman. He calls us the branches. Are we together? That every branch that does not bear fruit, he will trim and prune so that it will bear fruit. If a man abides in me, he says, and my word abides in him, that man will bear much fruit. For without me, he says, he can do nothing. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for you. Whatever has kept you in one place in life and destiny, that you are not able to make incremental steps and progress. After this conference, I decree and declare, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will go forward. Shout a believer's amen. You will go forward in life, in ministry, in your finances, in the name of Jesus Christ. My prayer for you already is found in Genesis chapter 24 and verse 1. The Bible says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. I like this. It says, And the Lord had blessed him in all things. How many things? A man can have rest round about. That you can look left and right and all you see is the faithfulness of God. One of my dear sons will say, when the promises of God are made manifest in your life, they will increase your prayer life and reduce your prayer points. So that your prayer points are so reduced that all is left is worship. There is nothing else to ask because God has so sorted your life. I'm praying for someone here who is a believer. One by one, God will start looking to the areas of your life where there is stagnation, where there is chaos, where there is anarchy. And he will bring order and advancement to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, very quickly for tonight, I want to give you three keys. Three keys that are responsible, having laid these foundations that number one, in Christ, we are all born into a life of victory. Whether you walk in the experience of that victory or not uh, depends on your understanding. But know this for a fact that you've been born in Christ into a life of victory. But that number two, the quality of your life and the extent of your impact as far as the revelation of the glory of God is concerned largely depends on you. And I want to give you three keys for tonight. Number one, the first key that can cause a man to arise. To arise means to leave your current dimension. To, to arise means to leave your current reality. Are we together? And to move higher, to go greater. An encounter with God. This is the first key. Everybody who wants to arise in this kingdom, you need an encounter with Jesus Christ. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32, the B part says, But the people that do know their God, profound scripture, they shall be strong capacity and they shall do exploits. Every time I read this scripture, it inspires me so much. He never said they should write about exploits. He never said they will explain exploits. He says they shall do exploits. The people that do know, that pay the price to know God. Do you know the foundation of Bible faith is not just scriptures. The foundation of Bible faith is the knowledge of God. You can have the knowledge of principles, but if you do not know God, it's like buying a fridge without it powered. 
it will still not produce anything. What gives life to your knowledge of scripture is the confidence of the person the scripture is talking about. He said, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Hallelujah. Now this is life eternal. Genesis chapter 11, I mean uh, John chapter 11 from verse 3. Jesus is praying and he said, this is life eternal that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. This is life eternal that they may know thee. Are we together? You must have an encounter with Jesus. Those who will do much for the kingdom in these seasons that we're stepping in let me tell you there are people who will have to pay the price in righteousness to know god to know god to know god you know your pastor there are some things you know he's able to do if your pastor tells you give me your account number i'm going to send 10 million you will not ask him again if he was joking because something about his character is where your confidence is hinged on are we together with all due respect, if someone who is just freelancing outside, trying to make his life happen, looks at you and says, I want to help you with 10 million, you will just invite him to church because you don't, don't waste my time. You are not insulting him. An awareness, using whatever parameters, you have convinced yourself that this person is joking, no matter how serious he is. There is something that if you know about God, fear dies. It's not about trying to be bold. Boldness is a consequence. Are we together now? There's something if you know about God, you can believe everything he says. Before you try to believe the word, believe God. If you cannot believe God, it will be difficult for you to believe anything you read in scripture. Are we together now? Because the scripture testify of him. And if you cannot believe God, you have to believe that God loves you that much. You have to believe that he is jealous over you. That your success is an advantage to his reputation on earth. There are things you need to believe about God. An experience with God. My life changed when I decided to shelve the mundane pursuit of many things. And to truly seek God. When you seek him and find him. You will find out that there are many things you don't have to seek again. Because in finding him you will find many things that people are seeking for. You are a man of God, paid the price to know God. Not a theoretical God. Not another man's explanation of God. Something happens to you when you know him. The audacity that you command in life and destiny is a function of your conviction about God. Bible faith is built upon this. Hallelujah. Honestly, I tell you by the message of God, there are certain things that cannot have an effect on me. I can't undo it again. It's a programming. The awareness of God has shielded me from certain fears. It has nothing to do with physical results happening. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says, I fear no evil. Not because the shadows have disappeared. If they like, they should stay there. He says, for thou art with me. Something happens when you are with me. He says, your rod and your staff your confidence is on him, on him, on him, your rod, your staff, your presence. Moses said, I don't care what we have, the gold, the intelligence to fight. If your presence will not go with us, we rather remain here. Call us failures, but with you, we are satisfied. Who is learning now? Our generation has truly lost the value of paying the price to know God. When you know God and you become an experiential host of his presence, I'm telling you there are many things you will not have to pray for. Trust me on this. Hallelujah. Many times we seek results that can only be found in his presence. There are many things we desire in our lives, but I can tell you they are only found in his presence. In the presence of God, even a rod that does not have root can board overnight. There are no impossibilities in his presence. Are we together now? Yes. As for me, I've made up my mind that beyond being a preacher, beyond being a man of God, I will truly be an addicted lover of his presence. Second Chronicles chapter 15. Let's read from verse 12 to 15. I hope God is helping someone. 
Second Chronicles 15 and verse 12. 12 to 15. Help us media. Let's read together. I hope you will not be tired. One to go. And they entered into a covenant. Uh -huh, to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their hearts and with all their souls. That whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death whether small or great, whether man or woman, verse 14. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets, verse 15, as loud as you can. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. Help me now. And he was found of them. The result, the Lord gave them. Stop, stop. Who gave them? Ah, there is a gift called rest that the Lord gave them. The Lord gave them. The Lord gave them. There are things God gives people. The Lord gave them rest round about. Rest round about the Lord. There are things that when you see captured in the life of certain believers, it's like a signature. God tells you this is it. I have tabernacle this life. Are we together now? There are certain buildings that when you see from an architectural standpoint, you can almost guess that it has to be one of these dexterous construction companies. You know that this was not just a locally outsourced contractor because there is a level of dexterity finishing attention to details. This is how you can see a life built by God. You can see a signature like Julius Berger, like, you know, CECC. God can build a life and sign on it. When you see it, you know that this one is a planting of the Lord. God was the farmer that planted this seed. This was his garden. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that men will look at your life and your life will be a continuation of their Bible study. That the things they did not understand as they opened their Bibles to study, God will use your life to give them further explanations. If they ever read that God is the one who favors men and they did not understand it, God will refer them to your life as, as a personification of what it means to be helped by God. You believe that? Shout Amen. Hallelujah. So you must make up your mind to have an encounter with God. An encounter with God. Show me a man who has failed by every definition but has a determination to know God, to learn God. I show you a man who is scheduling seasons of victory. Never laugh at a man who is investing in the knowledge of God. Are we together? Yes. Preachers, your strength and your impact in ministry will be a function of not just the quality of the sermons alone. I tell you sincerely, the knowledge of God. When you come to a church like this and you teach, you know that the presence of God is here. You see, let me tell you something with people. Whether you are saved or not, the spirit of man was designed to know when the presence of God is in a place. You can live in denial, but one thing you cannot deny is the reality of his presence. Pay the price to seek God. Half the time you spend trying to lobby your way through the emotions of men. If you will leave them in peace and invest it in his presence, you will look like a fool for a while. But ladies and gentlemen, when that Shekinah rests on you, you will become a living sign and a wonder. This has nothing to do with being in ministry. This is how beauty and glory and color evolves. Hallelujah. So, so that you don't think that, oh, I'm, 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 not, I'm not interested in being a man of God. So you just tell preachers about this. The secret of beauty and grace and color is his presence. It's his presence. It's his presence. Hallelujah. i rather fail in ministry and let my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, let his presence remain real to me. I consider myself a success. You may have heard me say, I will shut down Koinonia a thousand times to maintain my relationship with Jesus because what you see today was an overflow of that stream. I will be foolish to waste that experience because of a search for mundane things. 
show me a man who has decided to stay with God to shut your ears away from whatever whether good or bad and focus on his presence I'm showing you a very powerful secret some of you that was how you got so far until success distracted you return to the place of his presence it is the secret of victory that you can be in his presence and God will carry what is a prayer request of others and bring to you as a gift because in the secret place it is a love affair it's beyond a prayer affair it's beyond a fasting affair it's beyond a scripture quotation affair these are different layers but you finally get to the realm of lovers you know what lovers do when they are really in love a man can carry everything and give his wife courtesy love Love is not transactional. It's an expression of joy and pleasure. A desire to see. You see, let me tell you this. There are people by reason of the level of investment, mercy and grace that they've made in God's presence. The jealousy of God upon their lives looks so palpable. It looks like God seems to ignore others and focus on them. Even though we know that's not, that's not the case. But that is how determined he is to see that they continue to blossom. If you lose anything in your life, it is better to lose money and retain his presence. You didn't really lose. The money just went on a journey to gather its kind and return back. If, it is, if, if you still retain the presence of God, it's a secret that I'm praying will be a revelation to someone. Are we together now? Apostle, but you see, if I spend time to seek God and all these kinds of God things, do you know how many things that I have rent issues? I have the so if you leave his presence, will it solve the problem? Is it not in your Bible that it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow? Look, if God does not open a door, you can wrestle in front of a door and it will not open. The Bible says when the angel struck the struck the sodomites with blindness the bible says they wearied themselves in front of the door they were in front of a door that had their solution but because they were blind they wearied themselves the secret to ministry is to forget about the deception of publicity and stay staying is how you run staying is how you program speed in your life. Who is God speaking to? Because there are benefits from his presence. Benefits. Immense benefits from his presence. Are we together? Take your prayer life seriously. Take your word study life seriously. Take your time of worship. These are not just religious rituals. It's not just a preacher's recommendation to help you become spiritual. These are the keys. You are programming an enviable destiny. I'm telling you, there are believers who do not have time dedicated for God because they are busy trying to make life happen in the strength of the flesh. And this is the reason why many believers get angry because when you try and try and use brain work and use everything and it does not work and you watch others seem to rise in a level of ease that is intimidating, the secret is that they found treasures. There is something called treasures in darkness. The darkness here is not evil. Are you learning? Hmm. Treasures in darkness and hidden riches in secret places. Something you can find in his presence can bail you out for life. Bail you out for life. Bail your ministry for life. Are we together? An engracing you can receive as a residue of his presence can put you in a position of influence and honor and relevance all through the lifetime of your generation. I study the patriarchs, those who have gone to be with the Lord, both in scripture and modern history. And I can tell you the, the common line between all of them is that they invested in this business of presence. They did. They did. They spent time. Their prayer life was not just about receiving things and using prayer as just a means for transaction and to end there.
their purpose of prayer was to know him more to press deeper they taught certain layers in the spirit that changed their lives you can know the difference between a man of god who has invested in presence and one who is sincerely obeying theology the difference will be as clear as night and day presence you see when we minister the word there is a part of this preaching that intelligence cannot receive it's a spirit communication are we learning now? Presence. You want to arise? Stay in his presence. The spirit entered me. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2. The spirit entered me. Are you seeing that the business of arising starts with the spirit? It's a spirit business. When there was darkness in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Tohu wa bohu. Confusion and chaos. The Bible reveals the Holy Spirit. Before the matter of intelligence was spoken about, before words even came, it was the Spirit. What gives value to your speakings is the hovering of the Spirit. What makes your words potent? You want to tell the sick be healed and have them healed? You want to speak over nations? You want God to bless your mind? It is always, listen, the business of excellence and victory is a spirit affair. It is only that that spirit affair is transacted here in the earth realm. But if you lose touch, the root of all things is the spirit realm. Prosperity, the spirit realm. Influence, the spirit realm. Grace and power, the spirit realm. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge, the knowledge of God. Are we learning now? Pray in one minute and ask the Lord to plant a fresh hunger, a fresh hunger for him beyond the hunger for making it, beyond the hunger for excelling. Let me tell you the truth. Do you know that the desire to make it can be an idol? The desire to be anointed can be an idol. The desire to be a word giant can be an idol, as spiritual as it is. Anything that takes its place and steals that place is an idol. It doesn't have to be evil. Once it is not him being the first place, it can be an idol. I'd like you to pray sincerely. Cry for the grace to invest in his presence. Shalaka prande ke palando Cry the name of Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Number two, very quickly. The second key in addition to your encounter with God is that you must invest in building a correct perception. You must invest in building a correct perception. Second to your pressing into the things of God and knowing God, you must invest in building a correct perception. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 11 and 12. Son of man, what seest thou? And he says, the shoot of an almond tree. And he says, thou hast seen correctly. I hope you know that you don't see with your eyes. You see through your eyes. You see with your mind. Are we together now? Yes, the eye is simply a mechanism that gives your vision expression optically. You see through your eyes, not just with your eyes. That's why Bland Bartimaeus said that I may receive my sight. He didn't say that I may see, that I may receive my sight. Just because your eyes are open does not mean you have sight. Hallelujah. The price for a correct perception. Now please look at me. Many believers do not know the implication. I wish we had time. When you read Numbers, just write for reference. Just write for reference. Numbers chapter 13. When you read from verse 25 to 33. These were the 12 spies. They were sent to go and spy 
the land flowing with milk and honey, ten of them came with a report, ah, we saw this and that, we saw this, this was a land that had all kinds of things truly. He says, but we had a problem. We saw these guys who were giants, the sons of the Anakims, and we were like grasshoppers in our eyes. Then we became like grasshoppers in their eyes. And the Bible called it an evil report. An evil report. An evil report. An incorrect perception about yourself is an evil report. Are we together? Joshua, I mean, Caleb was angry and he said, let us go up at once. Let us go up at once. Now, let me tell you the truth. Your mentality is your contribution to your becoming successful or your failing. And when God really wants to help a man, God steps in and does something. He re-engineers your perception. It matters what you see about yourself. In Genesis 13, um, I believe from verse 14 there about to 17, this was when Lot and Abraham, they had become so successful, there were issues among their men, and Abraham said, we be brethren, let's not fight. Choose anywhere and you go. And after he left, the Bible says, the Lord told him, he says, Abraham, from where you are, I like that scripture, not where you want to go. You may not take a step there, but you can see from where thou art. He says, lift up your eyes northwards, southwards, eastwards, westwards. For as far as your eyes can see, unto you I have given as a possession. You can see. You can see. Some of these days today, by the mercy of God that we celebrate, were days we saw in the spirit. The Bible says, while we look not at the things... Ah, you, you must understand that there is a dimension of grace and glory that is vision dependent. Faith is vision dependent. Many years ago, I used to go as a very little child to our boys' quarters and I would hold a stick and I'm preaching there and sweating and feeling the anointing of the Holy Spirit quietly alone. I had an audience that only me was seeing. I was talking to nations and I believed what I was doing. On one occasion, I would later learn that my mother peeped through and she was seeing me doing all of that. It was in later years that she would tell me that, do you know, one day I peeped and I saw you doing your crusade. Unfortunately, today we are not speaking again to empty chairs. We are speaking to nations. Do you believe, listen carefully, everything in life is built twice. First in your mind and then physically. If you build anything once, you only wasted your energy. It will be destroyed. But if you build in your mind, it doesn't matter what happens to the physical building. That which you have built in your mind becomes real. You must pay the price for accurate perception. And the believer derives, listen carefully, the, the believer derives his mentality. He derives his perception from scripture. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible, scripture, is like um, the color that the artist uses to dip his brush and then paints something. That color you see that gives formation, definition, and image to that canvas is the word of God. Because until you encounter the word of God, your mentality is built drawn from various factors your background your failure your limitations are we together your sociological context your level of exposure but when you come into christ it is important that you pay the price and begin to build a correct perception and the bible has within it a compendium of proposals for you to take and then re-engineer your understanding. For instance, the Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You can see it as a recitation and even quote it to your own failure. Or you can internalize it and it becomes a reality that finds expression. Are we together? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Are we together now? You begin to create another kind of definition. We all came from backgrounds where some of us were not believed in. Some of us went through a plethora of unfavorable situations. It is your own responsibility right now to take advantage of the grace of God and labor in the world to re-engineer your perception. 
What do you see about your life? What do you believe about yourself? Are we together now? I can fail alone, but me and Jesus Christ cannot fail. We have become an invincible team. Young Cho will say, Holy Spirit, my senior partner. We are in partnership. This partnership is on to victory. Victory for sure. Are we together? I believe that I will never beg for bread while I serve his purposes. It's what I believe. I have taken time to edit my understanding. And when I got it, I stayed there. I pegged it like nailing vision, vision, uh, what they call it now? A vision board, nailing goals on a vision board. There are things I will never believe about myself. No. If you call me a failure, I feel sorry for you. And I'll be prepared in advance for your apology. You see that now. Victorious. Exalted with Christ. This is what I believe. I believe that I carry the life of God. I truly believe it. I do not believe that anyone will meet me twice to be blessed. No. No. I will go for a retreat. I carry the life of Christ. This is what I believe. I believe that every morning when I wake up, someone somewhere has a mandate by God to contribute to favor working in my life. This is what I believe. I really believe it. I enter every city as if they owe me. I expect something to come out of that city to me. Goodness, mercy. The Bible says they follow me. I must see a physical expression of that, that, that the reality of those spirits. They that be planted in the house of God. For instance, me, I should flourish in the courts of our God. The Bible says in old age, there's no depletion with time. It is from glory to glory. This is the definition of my perception. And you don't sit down and say, oh, this church thing, I understand. This is why many people fail. This is why they fail. The Bible says you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth. I took it literally and I believed it. It says I will make you exceedingly fruitful. Genesis 17 and verse 6. That kings will come out of you. And I told myself I will never raise a weak people. I will raise kings and vibe. I will not look for wealthy people to come. I will raise people. This is what I believe. This is not about being arrogant. You are programming yourself to win. You are programming yourself to be victorious. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is not just Pentecostal speaking. It's the righteousness of faith. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the victorious of the Lord say so. I do not believe that anything can cut short my life before my time. Not whilst I am serving God. I have surrounded myself with mysteries like chariots that I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That if they obey and serve him, they will spend their years in prosperity, their days in pleasure. Listen, your life will not give you what your neighbor believed about you. It will give you what you have chosen to believe. Either in partnership with culture, in partnership with weakness. Don't worry about what anybody believes about you. Opinions are the cheapest commodities on earth. Don't waste your time. It's too cheap. It's not worth your attention. What somebody wants you to sow in your farm is not what will grow. It's what you are sowing in your farm. If you want me to sow thorns and thistles in my farm, unfortunate for your imagination, it is the seeds that I put in my soil that grows. Is someone learning? In the name of Jesus, the Bible says I lay my hands on the sick. I lay my hands on the sick. The Bible says Gentiles come to my light. Where are they? I expect them. There's an instruction on the head of every Gentile to come to my light. He didn't say I will look for them. The Bible says they will come. Every Gentile I see, I know that there is an instruction. They will not reject me. No. And they are kings to the brightness of my rising. And based on the culture of kings, they don't come empty. No king comes empty. Even if you are wealthy, the kings come. When Sheba came to Solomon, she came bearing gifts. Even though she still returned with gifts. Who is learning? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Surely they shall gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, I believe that I'm invincible and indomitable by the power of God that koinonia will never go down his treasure house will not go down i'm challenging you if you keep believing nonsense i am telling you see it as the devil 
contributing to your failing in life you arise when your perception changes there was a mentality that kept you down it says but the people that sat not on the ground sat in darkness sat in darkness it was not the location that made them failures it was the mentality they sat in darkness even if you sit on a tower and it is in darkness you are still on the ground he called the light day and the darkness he called night in the economy of the spirit day is when your light comes not when morning comes it can be 12 noon and you are still in darkness he called the light day are we together you must pay the price for a healthy perception who programmed you into believing that you are nobody who programmed you into believing you must beg to eat who programmed you into believing that you cannot rise to do ministry as God intended who programmed you that increase is not your heritage let God be true his treasure house and every man every man every naysayer every Sambalat every Tobias it says let God be true and every man a liar Thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads. We walk through fire and through water, but thou brought us into a wealthy place. Believe that you are anointed by the Spirit. Believe that you are serving the purposes of God with your life. Are we together now? That there is a factor upon your life that forbids you from being rejected. It doesn't matter what gender. It doesn't matter what sentiment. They can argue until I show up. I carry his presence. God's in, I am God's investment. His jealousy is upon my life. This is what I believe. This is not arrogance. It is the truth. I define my reality by correcting my perception. Honestly, I do not believe that I will ever call for help and not have a man not show up. I believe it. Hallelujah. Every time God gives an assignment, I know that the grace for that assignment has gone ahead. And so I don't act like one who is confused. The Spirit of God, the Lord and His Spirit has sent me. The Lord and His Spirit. Who is learning tonight? Listen, I want you to leave this place tonight angry in your spirit I will not speak nonsense about my life again at best I will keep quiet I will not join Sambalats and Tobiases to stop me from arising and building Jesus said I will build my church and you were created in his image it's time for you to build your ministry build your house build your destiny arise and build and I'm saying the way you build it is not to look for bricks and mortar begin to clear up the debris in your mind and your thinking are we together for as he thinketh in his heart so is he so is he so is he kings i i believe with my life I, that there is nowhere i go on earth that is going it will be an honor to me but never to be intimidated if i have nothing at all in my life i have the life of god I can't guarantee that my intelligence will always bail me out. No. There are companies when you enter, you will know that intelligence is in levels. But the one thing I have is that I have the life of God. When all else fails, that life will not fail. Are you learning now? Let me give you number three and then we'll pray. We're out of time. Number one, you pay the price. To encounter God and to have an experience with God the God of the Bible number two invest in building a correct perception you have seen correctly some of you have been seen wrongly you have been calling a warrior a failure because of what the warrior is currently wearing you have been calling Joseph a failure because you met him in the pit mm -mm. number three the third key and that wraps up this teaching for tonight is that you must have courage. You want to arise and build? You need courage. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9. Be strong, it says, and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Now let me tell you this. 
Courage is a product of conviction. Courage is not necessarily the absence of fear, but that you are overwhelmed by your conviction of who God is. If he says, if it be thou, bid me come. Even if it's your first time walking on water, you will walk. There will always be a first time. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. God does not talk to men like he's talking to men. God talks to men like he's talking to himself. One of the ways you know that God is speaking to you is because everything he's saying, your flesh will fight it. It does not have the capacity to birth the dimension of God's dream for you. When God speaks to you, he doesn't speak to you like he's speaking to a Nigerian, like he's speaking to someone in Abuja. No. He will say, go and renovate that school as if he deposited money in the account because he really did. When God speaks with that instruction comes systems in place to make sure that if you walk in obedience, eventually that word will not fail. Is someone learning? Someone say courage. Ask every man of God and everybody you know who has attained a level of grace and glory. There were times they had to walk on water. Are we together now? Our obsession for guarantees as a generation is why we lack potent testimonies. We are overconscious of our reputation. What if I fail? You are already failing without doing anything. What do you have to lose? What if I fail? You are in the place of prayer and you had registered the company. Ah! Register the company again. I don't want trouble. Though. Which one is better? The trouble of poverty or at least try and let the helper meet you there. Are we together? Let me tell you this. You need courage. The righteous, is that still in your Bible, is as bold as a lion. Your boldness, if derived from scripture, is one that will not fail you. Make sure your confidence is hinged from your conviction. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. God does not fail. Oh, your worship team sang it beautifully here. He doesn't fail. It is our not understanding him that makes it look like he failed us. God does not fail. Most times we are not patient. Most times we are not thorough. Let me give you an instance. God can give you a goal. But most people don't stay to receive the strategy. It is prophecy plus strategy that equal manifestation. Your matching order is not when you hear what God wants to be done. Your matching order, your trigger is when you receive the strategy. Just because God tells you to bring down Jericho does not mean you invent your strategy. You will fail as if it's not God that sent you. Most times the problem is not a vision problem. It is that we are not patient enough. To receive the strategy every time prophecy comes rejoice but don't be in a hurry to run to execute stay until the strategy comes just because the red sea was parted yesterday does not mean when you see any river you wait for it to part sometimes you will need to walk on water other times you need to look well and you see that there is a boat there you will use the boat he has to reveal the strategy per assignment season for someone you came for this conference because the strategy of yesterday has brought you thus far right now you need courage that is built on a strategy that God delivered by himself you do business the way you were doing pre-covid you will fail woefully because God who knows his times are in your hands you need to receive the blueprint for now what is the blueprint for now yesterday you told me to go around Jericho what should I do today he can say, put the worshippers in front and raise worship. I will cause the enemies to kill themselves and you pack the gold. Another time he will tell you, prepare to fight. You will fight. I will give you victory. Let me tell you this. There is no believer who has one strategy that fits all throughout your lifetime. The strategy is per assignment, per season. Are we together now? But I'm charging you tonight that you need to be courageous. Some of you have failed so much you are afraid of moving. You need to dust your feet and stand up. Arise. He says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. The valley of Ezekiel were once an army. I don't know what happened to them. 
I wish the Bible told us the story. But as at the time Ezekiel got to that valley, they were already very dry, meaning they had been there in a long time. But it says, son of man, and this is what God is telling someone as we prepare to pray. Can these bones live again? Can this business live again? Can this ministry live again? Can your investment in the kingdom, can you start again? Are we together now? You've lost touch with anything that gives you life and glory. God is saying we can start again. He says, only thou knowest. And he said, prophesy. Speak to these bones. And he said, I prophesied as I was commanded. And there was a sound. The Lord sent me here to challenge someone. It's time to rise and build. Some of you have land, physical land. God has shown you mercy. You've had it for years. And you want to build. But your heart has failed you every time apostle all i have is hundred thousand the last time i told an architect to design a modest house he told me i would need 50 million i wanted to cast and bind that architect unfortunately my brother the same energy it takes to be frustrated is the same energy it takes to be courageous you are only wasting energy i have nothing to lose are we together now let me tell you something I've learned about life. Every time you dare life, it respects you. Most times you will see that what was a mountain was relative to your fear. By the time you take a step, that mountain is deflated to look its true size. Every challenge comes magnified. When you are courageous, it deflates the challenges to its true size. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. For someone here, God is saying, you have come past this mountain long enough. It's time for you to turn northwards. If you are not courageous, you will never be able to enter a house of your own. The first block you put on the ground is your defeating that inertia. You have conquered it. And let me tell you this. You nobody takes a step waiting for all the factors and the variables to be in place. No, sir. There are times you see people farming in the rain. If they had to wait for the weather to be conducive, the rainy season would pass and leave them at a loss. But they decided to take that step. We are going to pray. It is time to arise and build in ministry. Some of you here have the call of God upon your life. And you are saying, Apostle, where do I start from? Start from his presence. No invitations coming yet. No demand placed upon your life yet. But whilst you are hearing me, you can start like every champion started. Start in his presence. Start there. Invest in prayer. Invest in materials. Sit under the leadership of your pastor and learn while you serve. Learn the things that make this life work. You can tame life like an animal. You can play life like a chest. You can know you will win. Are we together? You can know. You don't hope you will win. You can know you will win. Let's stand. Ladies, some of you here cook very well, I believe. And how many of you know that you can gain a level of mastery such that even if we say, can you cook for all of us in this church, you smile with confidence. All you need is time and the right ingredients. As far as failure is concerned, you know that one is far from you and your kitchen because you have held on to the keys. That is how predictable your life can be. God is taking us through this conference and routing us through an accurate path that leads to predictable spiritual results. Not every key is important. You need the keys, the key combinations that open that door for you to have a triumphant entry into a great life. Some of you have so failed. Your success is by luck. You apply and engage any spiritual key and somehow one just works. God is bringing you to a level of mastery. And when he says arise, he means to throw down everything, every element of amateurism and rise to a point of competence in the spirit. Can you lift your hands wherever you are and cry unto the Lord if you've learned anything from tonight's teaching. The man of God before me challenged you that there must be purpose that gives definition to everything you are doing and that the purpose is to serve the Lord, to give him glory. Now I'm showing you by the word of God that God desires that we arise and build. 
The life you have been called into in Christ is a life indomitable, a life invincible, a life of grace and glory. Are we together? But knowing that you have an active role to play in whatever your life becomes, knowing that you have an active role to play in whatever the extent of your impact becomes, it leaves you with the responsibility to partner with the spirit of grace and program an enviable life. And I gave you three keys. Key number one, your experience with God. That everything that has stolen his place in your life, corrupted your time of prayer, your study of the word, it's important to lay aside every weight and the sin that don't easily besets you and to run with perseverance that race that is set before you. Go ahead and pray. We're wrapping up. And we spoke about investing in having a correct perception. Don't let the color of your skin de determine your possibilities. Your possibilities are determined determined by the superiority of your mentality that you can draw forth a superior mentality from the word of God a mentality that translates you to a winner at all times now thanks be to God the Bible says which causes us always to triumph not sometimes not sometimes the Bible says while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for our light afflictions which work it for us a great which is but for a moment that it walketh in us a greater weight of glory. Someone pray, though my beginning be small, in the name of Jesus, my latter end will surely increase. In the name of Jesus, I am exalted. The power of the Holy Ghost is at work in me. I am born again, born into a victorious family. My background may not be anything to write home about, but tonight I will embrace a scripture compliant man. Mentality, a scripture compliant paradigm, a scripture compliant perception. I am victorious in ministry. I am victorious in business. Gentiles come to my life. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. For my shame, I receive double. Where I have been deserted so that no man would pass through me. I become an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. I am a repairer of the breed. Men call me ministers of our God. Kings entreat my favor. My heart is indicting a good matter. Yea, I speak of excellent things. My tongue is a pen of a ready writer. Someone take a minute to press. Take a minute to press. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the favor of the Lord say so. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the righteous of the Lord say so. Let the exalted of the Lord say so. Finally, of great grace, I am courageous and I am strong. Because the spirit of fear, for God has not given me the spirit of fear, the fear of yesterday, the fear of today, the fear of man, the fear of taking action, but the spirit of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Someone pray. I refuse to fear. I reject fear. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am strong and of good courage. I am well able. I will go up at once. I will watch valiant in fight. I will fight the good fight of faith. One more minute, you are making declarations of faith. My heart will not fail me. Abuja, you are not a curse. You are a blessing to me. You open up your truly dead and I receive of the treasures of the land. In the name of Jesus Christ, I refuse to be despised. I am a child of God, born of royalty, the hand of God is upon my life, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, a thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side, none shall hurt me, will I see and behold, the reward of the wicked, with my eyes shall I see and behold, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is my light and my salvation, of whom shall I be afraid of? In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. This you see is how we walk in victory in the kingdom. That is the way we walk in the kingdom. It is not an empty confession. You are programming. You are not speaking to the air. 
you are sending words like ushers to prepare a triumphant entry into your tomorrow. Words have the power to transcend time. Yes. They can wait for you like ushers into your tomorrow yes. and grant you a triumphant entry yes. into your destiny. The righteousness that is of faith speaks. It is not silent. It speaks. Not blind confession. Confessing out of your conviction. Please go back and listen to these teachings again. Invest in correcting your perception. God wants to do much with your life, but some of you are limiting him like they did in the wilderness by saying, can God make a way in the wilderness? He's El Shaddai. It's a very powerful revelation. El Shaddai means a multi-breasted one. That means someone is not affected because he's taking care of another. A woman can only take care of two babies at the same time. But El Shaddai can have many children and all of them are served without one person suffering. He's called a multi-breasted one. Meaning his blessing you does not affect his blessing another when he prays. Yes, because sir. he's El Shaddai. Yes, I pray for you. Standing on the grace of the man of God, the angel over this house. I decree and declare where you have sat down. You are kept down by a low mentality. You are kept down by the lies of the devil, the failures of yesterday. I join faith with all the servants of God here and we speak to you. In the name of Jesus, arise and build. Amen. Arise and advance. Amen. Arise and make progress. Progress. Amen. Arise and smash yesterday's Amen. record. Go forward by the Spirit. Amen. Run through a troop by the Spirit. Amen. Leap over walls by the Spirit. Amen. I call you blessed and victorious. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. God bless you. from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching